there is a very thin line between multi-weight fighter and weight boom. Let's talk. Straighter, yep, the, not yep. a roundhouse right hand. And that's what we've been talking about, the straight shot. It's exactly. the one where he gets leverage on it. I don't want to kill Pull somebody back for a, a little bit. Seconds. Nah, I want a body on my record. Now, I want to see you fight, motherfuckers. I do. All right? I'm with you. I'm with you. As long as as long as long you're trying to fight the great, you're, or the, the, the best competition. Welcome to the graveyard. Click the link if you dare to. Mary, you alive. I'm prepared to. Welcome to the graveyard. You get your sources from clowns. So when you come around, we're here. Welcome to the graveyard. Click the link if you dare to. Mary, you alive. I'm prepared to. If you ain't with the moto, just click the link, bitch, and get buried like the rest. It ain't gonna work how you want it. These trolls already tried, too many come but don't leave. So if you hear, you gotta die. Spitting straight facts. These bitches cry cause they hate that. The LDBC's the top topic, bitch, hate that. Be the best to bring the truth to these fans. So why you hate? I'ma laugh and keep counting these bands. Welcome to the graveyard. Click the link, get the hands. Bury you alive, I'm prepared to. Welcome to the graveyard. You get your sources from clowns. So when you come around, we don't hear you. Welcome to the graveyard. Click the link if you dare to. Bury you alive, I'm prepared to. Welcome to the graveyard. You get your sources from clowns. So when you come around, we don't hear you. Welcome to the graveyard. So, these fighters, they move up in weight class. They get all these fights in different weight classes, and everybody's like, oh, man, this is so great. This guy's a multi-weight fighter, man. He's fighting in multi-weight classes. He, he's just doing so great. Look at this. He's, this guy's fought in three divisions. He's fought in four divisions, two divisions, the six division, seven division, five division, eight division champion this guy. That only matters if you're a moving weight class. And fighting the best competition. Let me say that one more time. It only matters if you are moving weight classes, fighting the best competition. If you're not going to fight the best competition in different weight classes, then you're ducking competition in your weight class. Yeah. That's how that that's how that works. Uh, and if you can make the weight in a different weight class, then aren't you a weight bully for being in the weight class that's smaller than the one you can move up and make? Wait a minute now. Y'all are telling me, oh, Errol Spence, man. Errol Spence is only in the same weight class as his whole career. That's all he's ever been. His whole career, Errol Spence, man. It's crazy. He's always been, he's such a weight bully, man. I can't believe he's a weight bully, man. He's only been one weight class his whole career. Errol Spence hasn't moved up. And blah, 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 blah. I'm sitting there like, wait, 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 wait. Wait, 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 wait. Errol Spence is a weight bully because he's only been in one weight class, but he can make. 154. Was Marvelous Marvin Hagler a weight bully because he could have made 168? Was Golovkin a weight bully because he could have made 168? Sergey Kovalev, was he a weight bully because he could have made cruiserweight? Just asking. I'm mean, just asking. Just asking. Throwing these things out there. Just throwing them out there. Trying to figure out um, this weight bully thing where the line differentiates from a multi weight fighter. Guys praise multi weight fighters. Oh man, this is so great. This guy, man, he was fighting at 115, now he's fighting at 118. Such a great move. Such a, a powerful move for a multi-weight fighter, man. He's, this is so great. 
He was fighting at 112. Now he's fighting at 118. I mean, 115. Now he's going to 118. And next thing you know, he's going to go to 122. This is, man, this guy is phenomenal. Fighting in multi-weight class. Well, how about you just have a cheeseburger and some fries instead of fighting at 112, you fight at 122 to start out with? How about that? Oh, Earl Spence. Earl Spence is a weight bully, man. He's such a weight bully because Earl Spence, man, he, he, he can fight at 154 until he's fighting Keith Thurman at 154. And now it's, oh, God. Oh, my God. I can't believe Earl Spence. Oh, God. I can't believe he's going to 154, man. This is so crazy, man. He's ducking Terrence Crawford, man. This is crazy. But don't y'all give Terrence Crawford credit for moving up? Oh, no, 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 BFTB, no, 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 because Terrence Crawford cleaned out the entire 140 division. Yeah, but isn't he a three-division champion? It's three-division, right? Hey, what happened at 135? Como está instead? Speaking of the English, what happened at 135? Did he unify? The answer is no. No, he did not, and he could have because the IBF champion was a top-ranked fighter, and he was a top-ranked fighter. He's probably still is a top-ranked fighter. But um, so Terrence Budger Crawford does nothing at 135, one belt, moves up from 135 to 140 because, well, he can't make the weight no more. They couldn't make the weight, so he moved from 135 to 140. Got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. He was asked about moving to 147 by Sean Porter, and, they, and he said, they want me to stay here. Those were his words. I don't, man, man, you know well, you know. I don't even know. They want me to stay here. All right, cool, 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 cool. But you could have made 147. If you ask Roy Jones, uh, 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 come on, baby, he, he walks around 154. He, 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 he 155 tonight. Man, Terry Crawford, he 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 can make one fifty. He 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 one forty. He one fifty five tonight. He one fifty five tonight. So, why isn't Terence Crawford fighting at one fifty four then? Oh oh oh, B B F U because he wants undisputed to vote. Why? Why does he want undisputed at one forty seven? Why can't he just go to one fifty four? He didn't get undisputed at one thirty five. It's one fight. For undisputed at 154, one fight. You're the WBO super champion. The last I checked, 154 is a whole division. So if you move to 154 as the 147 WBO champion, and you move to 154 and become the mandatory, in one fight you are now the undisputed champion in two weight class. But doesn't that mean you could have made 154 all along? So you are telling me Terrence Crawford's too small for 154. He can't make it right now. That's what you're telling me. But Earl Spence is a weight bully, so he can move up to 154. <laughs> that what I'm trying to figure this out. I really am trying to figure this out. So, so are you telling me if a fighter can move up, then they are a weight bully at the weight that they're fighting in? Tank Davis, man. Tank Davis is a weight bully, man. He fought at 154. I mean, uh, 140. He can, he, he can fight at 140. Tank Davis fat. He a big guy, man. He can fight at 140. He, he, he could do that. So was Kel Brook, was Kel Brook a weight bully? Then he fight at 160, moved down from 160 to fight Errol Spence. The last I checked, Sambo Bradley just said, come on, man. So you mean to tell me you're going to go up to another weight class and fight and then come back down and fight Terrence Crawford? But didn't Kell Brook do that? Didn't he move up to 160 from 147 to fight Kell Brook? I mean, to fight uh, Bum Lofkin and then move back down from 160 to 147 to fight Errol Spence? Didn't he do that? In back-to-back fights, did, did, he did that, right? Oh, yeah, BFD, but he, but, he, but he lost. I don't give a fuck if he lost. He still did it. It, it can be done. It has been done. So was Kell Brook a weight bully? Didn't Kell Brook say he can't make 147 no more? That's the reason why the first fight with uh, Budrick fell through because he said he couldn't make 147 and just went to 154 to fight. And then mysteriously went back down to 147 a year later anyway. Mmm. Mmm. But Terrence Crawford's not a weight bully, though. Errol Spence is a weight bully because he can move up. He's never missed weight. 
He's fought at 147 this entire time and he's never missed weight, but yet he's a weight bully. But Terrence Crawford has fought in three weight classes, which shows that he can move up from the beginning. He never had to start out at 135. He could have started out at 147. He could have started his career at 47. He decided to start at 135. He could have started at 147, which means he was killing himself to make 35, which means he was killing himself to make 140. So, so, so when you fought uh, Gamboa, you was clearly the bigger man. So you made the weight, and then you blew up in weight. You were fighting for the WBO strap, so you did not have to worry about being 10 pounds. You could have been 30 pounds over if you felt like it. Because there is no weight limit in the WBO, the WBA, or the WBC. It's only the IBF. The irony. <laughs> the irony that you had the IBF belt, you didn't try to unify the IBF belt at 135. Could it be because you couldn't keep within that 10 pounds? Could that have been the case? Just asking. Because if you sit around wondering, why didn't this man unify at 135? Why didn't he? I'm not saying that's the case, but I'm asking why didn't he unify? The guy that he could have fought, that met the Spanish guy, the Latino dude, was an IBF champion in top rank at 135. You are the WBO champion in top rank at 135, which meant that you could have unified in-house. Or could it be you couldn't make that 10 pounds? Oh, no, no, no. Turner Budrick, top rank Toby. He ain't never missed weight. Top rank Toby, man. He, he, he always. Yeah, I, I understand that. Now, what is the after? What is the after? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you weigh in and then when you have to rehydrate, when you go rehydrating, what is he then? Because the IBF champion can only rehydrate 10 pounds. So what are you then? Mmm. Just up to think about on why he did not unify at 135. Because he was probably walking around at 147. <laughs> yeah, he's probably walking around at 147 when he was at 135. Which would have disqualified you from competing for the IBF title. So I'm not saying that's the case, but it makes sense for a multi-weight fighter. Because I look at multi-weight fighters totally different than you guys look at multi-weight fighters. If I look at a multi-weight fighter, I say, okay, well, I guess you couldn't make the weight anymore. So why were you there in the first place? Especially if you was only there for one or two fights and dipped out. Like Terrence Budger Crawford when he was at 135. Few fights at 35 and then dip out. Oh, no, BFTB, he fought a lot more at 135. Yeah, but he was also fighting at 140. I'm not mistaken, he had a fight at 47. If I'm not mistaken. He damn sure was fighting at 140 in some of those fights coming up and then dropped back, dropped down to 135. So he was fighting at 140. He had fights at 140 and then dropped down to 135. He could have stayed at 140. Or, or would that have put him in line to fight Danny Garcia? Or um, Amir Khan, when he was Amir Khan. Or Lamont Peterson. Or, you know, some of those killers. Ruslan Provotnikov. Sambo Bradley. Yeah, 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 those guys. Could he, would have put him in line to fight a Sambo Bradley at 140? Would have put him in line. It was an in-house fight. Or let me guess, that was another in-house fight that they separated by weight classes. But he could have made 140. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when Danny Garcia was reigning supreme at 140, uh, Budrick could have been there at 140. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wanting to unify or become undisputed with Danny Garcia at 140. But none of that. You stay at 35 until Danny goes to 140, then you move up. Do you move up when Danny is leaving? But you could have made 140 when Danny was there, just like you could have made 147. But Errol Spence is the weight bully because he only went in one weight class. Well, if you stay at one weight class and you clean up everybody there, just like they claim Budger did at 140, then you move up. Yeah, yeah, that's how you do that. 
That's what Errol is doing right now. That is what marvelous Marvin Hagler did. That is what Usyk did, Bernard Hopkins, and a litany of others. If they stayed there and cleaned up everything, and then once they cleaned up everything, then they moved up. There was nothing left for them there. Then they moved up for more challenges. They didn't just pick a fight and then bounce when there was other challenges in the weight class. That's weight bully-ish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I, I know that my normal weight is about 150-ish. I'm a WBO champion, so what I'll do is I'll drain myself down to 135 and then blow up in weight. I won't get none of the other belts because getting the other belts puts a weight limit, well, not the other belts, but the IBS belt puts a weight limit on what I can weigh after I weigh in, only 10 pounds. I'm not saying that's the case, but what I am saying is it's kind of ironic that that's the belt that was in-house and he never unified at 135. Waited until he was at 140 and got the belt last and never defended it. That's a fact. But Errol Spence is the weight bully because he stayed at one weight class. But Budrick got the IBF belt from Ndongo and never defended it. Vacated it immediately. Not saying that's the case. But I am saying it sort of does sound like it. I'm not saying, oh man, I'm not saying that Terrence Crawford ducked all these guys at 135 and 140, but I am saying he had feathers. Oh, he didn't duck unification at, at top rank with, with, that, with the IBF belt. But he sure laid eggs. Oh, he didn't duck Sergey Lipinitz after he won the IBF belt from Ndongo and he was mandated to fight Lipinitz and vacated immediately. He didn't do that. He cleaned up everything, BFTB. There was nobody left there for him to fight, BFTB. He did it all, BFTB. Wait, bully. But yet, y'all put that label on Errol you put that label on Errol Spence because he is literally cleaning up everything in his stable, everything in his division, everything in his weight class. He's cleaning it all up. But he's not a weight bully. Hmm. So Thomas Hitman Hearns wasn't a weight bully when he fought Duran. You know, Duran moving up from 35. And Thomas Hitman Hearns fought him at 154. Not a, not a weight bully. Sugar Ray Leonard, not a weight bully. Duran moving up from 35, fighting a 147-pound fighter. You're not a, not a weight bully? No, no. All right, no. That is for kings. I'm not knocking him. I'm a, I'm, I'm a fan. Thomas Hickman Hearns is my favorite fighter of all time. But the hypocrisy is insane to me. It's fucking insane to me. If anybody is a weight bully, it is Terrence Budger at Crawford. If anybody is a weight bully, it's fighters like Manny Pac-Man Pacquiao, who could have easily fought at 147 the entirety of his career. Yeah. If you can fight at these, this, this level the entirety, then why are you draining yourself to fight littler, smaller guys at a smaller weight class? Because when you rehydrate, you're naturally blowing back up to a different weight class. You know, like Manny Pacquiao drain Cotto down and then outweighed him on fight night. Or he drained Oscar La Hoya down and then outweighed him on fight night. Shit like that. Or Cinnamon Clitoris drained Floyd Mayweather and then outweighed him on fight night. Oh, he didn't drain him. He said he could fight at 152. Floyd Mayweather, Floyd Mayweather is a 147, 154-pound fighter. What are you? But he didn't drain him, though. Shut up. Shut up. This man weighed like 165, 170, fighting a man who weighed 152 pounds. But that's Nothing, though, right? I, I got it. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Y'all don't care anyway. Y'all just want to see Errol lose. Y'all just want to hate on Errol Spence and see the man lose. Y'all, y'all don't care. You have no comeback for this. You have no defense for this at all. None. You'll just say some stupid ass shit in the comments like y'all normally do. Y'all don't care. You just want Errol to lose. BFTB, shout out to the mic. L-D-B-C. And I'm out.